I actually kind of came full circle. I used to sort of be against it. I used to just think of it as a marketing term, but after doing a deep dive and studying all of the different articles and videos and material that are out there and really understanding the way that things are headed, what we'll need to do as humans designing the future, this is gonna be necessary. So what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be answering the question, what is industry 5.0? So if that sounds interesting, stay tuned. My name is Zach with 4.0 Solutions. We run the number one YouTube channel on all things industry 4.0. IIoT and digital transformation. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to get subscribed and like this video. Stick around to the end and we'll break down what is Industry 5.0. I've watched every single video on Industry 5.0 and I've read the white papers. This video is gonna summarize all my knowledge and we're gonna share the history of industrial revolutions and we actually break it down a little bit differently than everyone else. You know, I've seen a couple people have incorrect definitions of industry 5.0. We're gonna lay it down in this video and you're gonna walk away with some important concepts that you need to keep in mind in 2022 and beyond. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so what is industry 5.0 and why does it matter? So in order to understand industry, industry 5.0, we need to talk about all of the previous industrial revolutions then we need to talk about 4.0 and then we'll go into 5.0. So the way that we define the industrial revolutions is a little bit differently than everywhere else you'll see on the internet. We actually start all the way back at industry 0.0 .0 and that was basically the printing press in the 15th century. Invented by Johannes Gutenberg in Germany, the printing press laid the foundation for what become the first industrial revolution. So industry 1.0, uh, the first industrial revolution happened in England in the late 18th, 18th century. It was around the time of the invention in the steam engine, but actually it was primarily powered by water power and the development of machine tools. Right around that time, the lathe was created to be able to re uh, recreate parts, right? So that was the first machine tools and the rise of the mechanized factory system. That's when we went from farm to factory. Uh, and like I said, largely water powered. Industry 2.0 or the second industrial revolution, it was primarily consisting of the building out of railroads. So the introduction of the supply chain, large scale iron and steel production and widespread use of machinery in manufacturing. So not just largely water powered machines, but like heavy equipment machines. And this greatly increased the use of steam power. This was the introduction of the electric, the electrification, right? So there were some electrifications of assembly lines like Henry Ford, but it was uh, greatly powered by the use of steam power, widespread use of the telegraph, and the beginning of the use of oil and gas and mass production, right? This is what we always talk about with the assembly line, Henry Ford. But, you know, in the late 19th century to early 20th century, that's what industry, the second industrial revolution was. Going on to the third industrial revolution, we have the shift from mechanical and analog electronics to digital electronics. This was the PLC. This was the computer networks, right? Industry 2.0, you had, you had the telegraph. Industry 3.0, you had like networks and digital electronics, taking manual relay boards, turning them into a programmable logic controller and you know replacing manual starting and stopping of machines to automated machines, right? Industry 3.0 was the automation of manufacturing process. And you know we all know Industry 4.0 was the automation of manufacturing businesses automating the making of decisions, right? Industry 4.0 was all about taking the data generated from the digital revolution or the third industrial revolution and turning it into information. You could consider this the second information revolution with the first one being um, the printing press, right? And connecting everything together, the, generation, the creation of cyber physical systems and the industrial internet of things, or as we all like to call it, IIoT. This was the digital transformation. Going from industry 3.0 to industry 4.0 was digital transformation. Now, if you guys are familiar with our channel, this is all review. Let's talk about what is industry 5.0. So industry 5.0 is human-centric design that's all about putting the human first, right? For industry and society. 
It has an emphasis on environmental and social sustainability. That is key, right? So one of the criticisms of Industry 4.0, which is actually a little bit of a misnomer, was that it was all about creating profits, right? Automating machines and taking people out of the equation and creating massive, massive profits for large organizations, large manufacturers. While that is true, the best Industry 4.0 companies actually had Industry 5.0 in mind without even realizing it. Our definition of industry 4.0, if you look at what is the industry 4.0 mindset, which I'll put in the card in the corner or the link in the description. What is the mindset of an industry 4.0 professional? Number one, absolutely 100% they are values driven. The number one thing about what we said about what an industry 4.0 professional was, that they were 100% mission driven and values based. And that mission is not about creation of profits. Take Tesla for example. Tesla we often talk about as the leader in industry 4.0. We could also consider them the leader in industry 5.0 not because they're generating massive, massive profits, but because their focus and their mission is on creating renewable energy, widespread adoption of renewable energy and sustainable transport. A side effect of a successful industry 5.0 mission-driven and values-based company is you will become incredibly profitable, right? If you're providing a tremendous value to society, to your stakeholders, to your employees, the side effect of that is massive profits. So it's really flipping the model on its head. It's not about profits first, and everything else. It's about mission driven and values based and profit is a byproduct. You know, a lot of thousands and thousands of organizations out there have their mission statement on the wall, but they act in a different way, right? They act in a profit driven way. If you guys work for a profit driven company and you know that, like comment down below saying, hey, you know, my company says their mission is this, but they really act in another way. It's horrible, right? It's, it's, that's, that's industry 3.0, right? To, to be a successful industry 4.0 company, you actually need to lead with an industry 5.0 mindset. And then it's also including the widespread use of the metaverse. A couple of years ago, if you asked what is the industry 5.0, people would have said, oh, AR, VR. Well, now we're actually really getting to see that come to play with the metaverse and you know, built on blockchain and augmented and virtual reality technologies are really becoming mainstream. The metaverse is introducing a whole new economy and it's built on humans. There's going to be jobs that are created in the metaverse. There's real estate already going in the metaverse, right? So you have people, designers and creators. And the best part about the metaverse is it puts the power back in the, in the people's hands through the blockchain. It's a distributed ownership. Old companies that you post on social media and they owned that assets, they were creating massive profits for themselves. The new wave of social connectivity is going to be putting the ownership back in the people's hands. When you create a social post, you will own that and the IP to it and the benefits of that uh, social post. Same thing with NFTs, right? When you create an NFT, you are putting that out onto the blockchain that you own that asset. If you're uploading it to some other, like Facebook, they own that. But if you're using a, a distributed technology in the metaverse, it's putting the power back in the people's hands and distributing the power and the wealth. Let's dive a little bit deeper into each one of the pillars of what is Industry 5.0. So we talked about environmental sustainability. Fun fact, in 2021, from January to October, 87% of new power creation was renewable energy. So it's already here. I bet you probably didn't know that. If you guys didn't know that, let me know down in the comments below. Or if you've heard someone say, Oh, you drive a Tesla, it's just a remote tailpipe. You're running on coal energy. Uh, that's not true at all. 86% of new power capacity in 2021, from January to October, was solar and wind. Renewable energy is here and it's growing faster than I think people realize. So that's a key element of Industry 5.0, environmental sustainability, social sustainability, right? This was largely brought on by coronavirus 19. There was a lot of unrest. There was a lot of ways in which it was not handled correctly. But the key element of Industry 5.0 is creating social stability. Our mission is to save and create middle class jobs because we know without a healthy middle class, you got a, a lot of social unrest. You get a divisive society. You have a widening wealth gap. That's a recipe for disaster. A key element of Industry 5.0, like I said, is putting the power and profit back in the hands of the people. The beneficiaries of Industry 5.0 is going to be a strong middle class. The class system should look like this, should look like a bell curve with the middle class being the majority of people. That's a healthy society. That's a key element of Industry 5.0. Some of you may say, well, Tesla, 
has created the world's richest man, Elon Musk, who is worth over 300 billion. Well, it's funny you say that because Elon Musk in 2021 paid over $11 billion in taxes, which was the most of any person of any year in history. In addition to that, Tesla has created many, many millionaires to the point at which it has its own term, which is called a tesla -nair. I myself am invested in Tesla and I've gained significant wealth creation through that investment. Again, it's not just creating one person's wealth. It's about accelerating the advent of sustainable energy and a byproduct of that is profit. We don't need less Elon Musks. We need more Elon Musks. We need more Industry 5.0 professionals. So that's why I'm making this video. Creating a healthy middle class is, a, is key to having social stability. A widening wealth gap creates social unrest. Social stability is key element of Industry 5.0. That's paying your workers a living wage. That's not just driving them into the ground. Fun fact, Dan Price actually shared this on LinkedIn. If you are on minimum wage, then you're actually eligible for Medicare, which is something that we as taxpayers all pay for. So instead of the taxpayer subsidizing low wages, companies with the ability to generate profit through automation and industry 4.0 are gonna start paying their uh, workers a living wage. That's the value they bring to the company. It's about humans. Humans are, are different than robots. It's not robots over humans, it's humans and robots. Elon Musk tweeted when spinning up the Model 3 production line, he over automated and he actually said that was his fault, his mistake and humans are underrated. And he often says we need more humans. He tweeted the other day about the census data. We have a problem with uh, United States. Like the, the world uh, census data is growing, population is growing, but in the United States, it's actually shrinking. The, the lower age brackets are getting smaller and smaller. That's partly because people can't afford to have kids. They're working 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week, working two or three jobs, working minimum wage, when in reality, Industry 5.0, we're gonna be working fewer hours. Elon Musk even talked about a universal basic income will be needed. Some people will not need to work at all, which creates more opportunity to be creative and create new companies and innovations and ideas. So that's another key element of Industry 5.0. Um, human centric, like I said, Elon Musk has tweeted that he over automated and that humans are underrated. He has said many times that we need more people. Human centric, humans are at the center of Industry 5.0. They were an important element of Industry 4.0. We often talk about the industrial internet of things being the connection of people, hardware, and software all connected into a unified namespace. Industry 5.0, people are at the center of that unified namespace. And last but not least, the metaverse. And, and the metaverse is inherently sustainable by design. There is truly is a finite amount of land and um, there's a finite amount of resources for us to build new buildings and new open spaces. But the metaverse has a nearly unlimited amount of uh, virtual servers, virtual metaverses, and, and virtual reality spaces to connect people, to create new ecosystems. Virtual manufacturing is gonna become a thing. The metaverse, virtual reality, augmented reality is gonna be a huge component of Industry 5.0. And again, putting the emphasis back on the people, allowing them to be human, allowing them to be creative, and that's powered by the metaverse. All right, so a key element of environmental sustainability is circular manufacturing. What is circular manufacturing? So manufacturing starts with the collection of the raw materials that goes into the design of new products, into the manufacturing, taking the raw materials, designing them, manufacturing smart products. Industry 4.0, we're always talking about making smart products that get better after you buy them. In this example, we'll use a Tesla. Once the Tesla has reached its end of life, we're gonna go ahead and recycle the raw materials that were used in the production of that Tesla. Think of all of the batteries as a virtual mine. How many batteries do you have in old cell phones or old laptops that are tucked away in a box in your closet? Circular manufacturing is taking those old products or end of life Teslas and mining the materials out of those old products, creating that closed loop manufacturing process. Once you recycle the products, you take the raw materials and you make new products. Think about it, with a finite amount of resources like cobalt or lithium, we could create new Teslas indefinitely because you can continue to reuse them. Right, so there's a finite amount of Teslas available or power packs available at one time, but once the old ones die, rather than stuffing them in landmines, we're gonna recycle the materials and mine them to create new batteries, to create new electric vehicles. All right, so in summation, what is Industry 5.0? What are the key elements of Industry 5.0? Number one, 100% of companies are mission-driven and values-based, and that mission and value is not profit. Profit is a byproduct. Number two, 
Industry 4.0 introduced a lot of new robotics and automation. Industry 5.0, robotics and automation complement humans, but do not overtake them. This is at the forefront of our design, right? Humans create the future. Rather than reacting to the future, we're gonna be uh, thoughtfully designing and creating new plants and new factories with robots being complementary to humans, not overtaking them. Elon Musk made that mistake before, he's not gonna make it again. Environmental, political, and social stability is at the forefront of design and creation of companies and organizations. There's social organizations, there's mission-driven and values-based organizations, Tesla, again, an ex <laughs> we might as well refer to them as the leading example of Industry 5.0. Their mission is to create environmental sustainability with renewable energies. Renewable energies are here. Last year, 87% of new power generation was renewable energy. That's why we're talking about this now. It's really important. All right, humans are working more creative jobs and less monotonous and dangerous jobs. This was you know, a key element of Industry 4.0. It's continued to be a key element of Industry 5.0, and it ties into the metaverse and new jobs that are created. Humans are working fewer hours and may not need to work at all. Elon Musk talked about universal basic income. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but one of the articles, one of the videos said that uh, a three day work week is gonna be kind of the norm for industry 5.0 society. The other days you're not not working at all. You're contributing to your society, you're contributing to your community, you're engaging with friends and family, you're being creative, you're doing maybe a side hustle or you're working in the metaverse. Working less hours is gonna be a thing, not working more hours. And you know, there may become a point where some people may not need to work at all with the need for a universal basic income. All right, so virtual reality technology will create a new economy in the metaverse. Virtual reality is a key component of Industry 5.0. It's inherently sustainable by design, and it puts the power back in the hands of the people to be able to travel wherever they want, be able to connect with whoever they want. The creativity and capabilities of the metaverse are almost unlimited. So that really allows humans to, to be who they want to be in the metaverse and in, in the, the real world too. And last but not least, this is powered by the rides, widespread implementation of Industry 4.0 manufacturing. Without a successful rollout of Industry 4.0, we can't actually achieve Industry 5.0. We can't just say, hey, we want to be socially and economically stable without putting in the groundwork to make that possible. The way that we're going to be able to create this abundance of wealth and abundance of resources is through the successful rollout of Industry 4.0. Like we said all the time, one of the reasons Tesla is so profitable is because of their execution of the fourth industrial revolution. Really, their goal is to get to the fifth industrial revolution. We're living in this now. This is the fifth industrial revolution. We may not change the channel name. We're still gonna be 4.0 solutions because like I said, without a successful rollout of Industry 4.0, you can't get to 5.0. So if you guys need help, if you're working at a manufacturer, you're working at a system integrator, we've created many products and programs that are linked down below to help you succeed in the fourth industrial revolution. We've long since incorporated Industry 5.0 concepts into our Industry 4.0 education. So Industry 5.0, it's here, it's happening now. If you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, there'll be a link down below to join the Industry 4.0 community Discord server. And we created a new channel and topic for Industry 5.0 discussions. We'd love to see you in there. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.